Welcome, welcome everyone on this beautiful Saturday. Thank you for joining us today. We have a super, super duper fun lesson. Um, interactive English <laughs> is here, it's in the house. Oh my God, okay. Uh, sorry, I was trying to be cool, it didn't work. Um, we are here today for a super fun lesson, a lesson that I think is very useful and I think it's going to be very fun for uh, our students. So if you are just joining us, um, please, 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 please write down your name and where you are joining us from because I love to see how where our students are from, uh, sh you know, sharing in this, sharing our knowledge and um, creating a wonderful community of students from everywhere. So let's see. Hi, Giffen. Hi, Bindu. Hi, Rogerio. Hi, um, Huadin. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us again. Uh, write your name and where you are from. My name is Joanna from Interactive English and I am here to talk to you today about ways we can practice English on our own. Okay, so if you're just joining, thank you from Belgium, from Stockholm, from Brazil, Venezuela. Oh, this is such a wonderful crowd. I am talking to you today from the beautiful city of Budapest. Uh, so it's so nice to see that we are from everywhere. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Greetings and welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh gosh, from hell? No, I doubt that you're in hell. They don't have typewriters, or not typewriters, they don't have keyboards there, uh, or the internet, or maybe they do, I don't know. But welcome, um, like I said, today we are talking about activities you can do by yourself. So one of the most requested uh, questions we always, always get is students asking, how can I practice? How can I improve my English? And of course, we recognize that uh, it's sometimes it can be difficult to improve your English if you don't have a teacher or somebody to practice with where you're in luck because there are so many ways you can practice your English by yourself, without someone. You don't need a teacher for these activities. Um, you don't need a friend. Uh, it is absolutely free if you have an internet connection and sometimes even if you don't with a little bit of preparation. So uh, let me see, let me look in our um, chat so many people I'm so grateful to have all of you in our classroom and kind of share in our community so hi Dahlia hi uh, from Somalia from Sri Lanka Thailand India um, beautiful wonderful thank you guys I'm sorry just my charger um, sorry just one second there we go <laughs> thank you guys so much from joining oh it's so wonderful to see you okay so I have a request from you. Uh, I'm going to ask you because we're going to play some of these, we're going to do some of these activities together. And um, when I ask you, please give me answers. So you will see that uh, we will need words, we will need sentences, uh, we will need different things. And I'm going to look for you guys, my students, my friends, my community, for answers, okay? So please, please, please answer, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to participate in this together. And then you can do them by yourself. So, thank you guys. Okay, let's see. Uh, if you're just joining, like I said, please write down your name, where you're from, because it's so fun for everyone to see where everyone is from. Okay, so the first one we're talking about today. Um, Hangman. Have you ever heard of Hangman? Uh, this is a game that I used to play as a child. Um, it's, it's, I think, in many languages, not just in English, but it happens to be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful help um, with your spelling. Now, if you're not new to English, you know that English is not a phonetic language, which means that English is you can't, the words uh, are not spelled the way you hear them, which means that spelling can be difficult. And I'm sure we've all had some problems with spelling and sometimes we make mistakes. 
So please, in the comments, write down if you sometimes have problems with spelling in English. Let us know. Do you have problems? Because I know it can be difficult. And full disclosure, even native speakers have problems with spelling in English. So it is not easy, okay? Hangman will help you with this, with this problem, because it's all about spelling. Spelling and um, it's a fun way of going about it. So let's see, anyone has... Oh yeah, this is Apple, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for guessing. This is actually just a picture I put in there to give an example, but thank you guys, doing great job. Spelling also, wonderful. Okay, are you guys ready for a more difficult one? Because I have one for you. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so um, I have a series of websites here that I'm using and um, these websites, I'm going to put a link for all of them after we finish the lesson uh, because all of these are going to be very, very, very useful for you. But we're going to play them together and then, um, and then we're going to... Um, to answer them and then I'll put the links in there. Okay, so this website I found is called gamestolearnenglish.com. Uh, it has a series of different categories. So this particular hangman game um, has categories. So if you're, if you're kind of newer to learning English, this is a really good way to review some words, your vocabulary, but also a very good way to um, like learn it by categories. So for example, if I click on food, you see if you kind of scroll above, you can see the content. So you can see the kinds of words that are in there. So I'm gonna click on it, okay? So this is possibly an easy one. So I wanna see what are some words, four letter words that we can guess. Which one should I click, click on? What do you guys think? Let's see. Do I have any suggestions? I'm going to click until I see all your comments. I'm going to click on P. Oh, it's a real one. Let's see, I usually find, okay, any suggestions? What are we doing? Any guesses? I'm going to click on A. A, okay, P, A, what could it be? Uh, any suggestions? Moon. Maybe, but remember, this is food. It's food. It's it's the theme of food. I'm gonna go with M. Uh oh. Ooh. Uh, P. What starts with P? Oh, pear. Okay, let's try. Um. Oh, you are right. Okay, so there's an E there. There's an E. Uh, very good, very good. I'm gonna press on R. Oh. <gasps> You are correct, good job, except for the spelling, okay? It's not a peer, it's a pair, good job, good job, okay? So you guys can see how this this can be really, really useful. And like I said, it's with categories. So you can, you can choose different categories on this website, and this is, again, a little bit easier. Now, if you want a bit of a challenge, uh, this is kind of a medium one, um, and if you want to even practice the cultural aspect of uh, of English, like uh, for example, Christmas vocabulary, you can click on this other website that's called justhangman.com and it has different Christmas categories. So you can play around. I'm not going to go through all of them uh, because I really wanted to focus on the next one, but this is very, very helpful. It's kind of a medium um, difficulty uh, activity. Now, this is the one I wanted to talk to you about because I wanted to show you um, the different ways that uh, you, can, you can work with this one. So this website is called hangmanwordgame.com. If you can't catch the word, don't worry. I will put it on a little later after we finish. But I wanted to show you these options. Uh, you can click on play with friends or random opponents so if you want something very, very challenging because you have to play against time, against somebody, or you can click or, on a single player untimed, so there's no time limit, you can play by yourself, or timed, and you have two minutes to solve the game. So you have all of these levels, 
and you see the game here and you have to try to figure it out. So I'm just going to kind of click on it to show you guys. We're not going to play this one, but just to show you how it works. Oh, so as you can see, recitation was the word. It's a more difficult word. So again, this is if you want a challenge. If you want a challenge, this is your, um, this is this is the uh, your your go to. So I'm going to put all of these on the website. Thank you guys again for joining. Um, <laughs> uh, hi, Marco. Uh, nice to see you again. If I miss your names uh, and I miss if you have a question, please write it down again. Uh, but thank you for joining. If you um, are just joining, please tell us your name and where you're from. Uh, because it's fun to see and we were just talking about activities you can do by yourself one of them being hangman now I know that a lot of people uh, may want to practice English uh, on your phone so if you if you, you don't want to do this there are so many apps too that you can look on your phone uh, that just have the name hangman and you can do that as well okay are you guys ready for my second one this one's a little bit more difficult so I'm kind of going on difficulty level here. Boom, crossword puzzles. Okay, um, crossword puzzles are great. Uh, they are kind of like hangman, but so much crazier because you have to deal with words everywhere. Um, so crossword, I don't know if I explained by the way, hangman, the whole point of a hangman is you have so many choices and if you don't, if you don't guess the word in so many choices, you have a little man that keeps getting drawn and eventually, if you don't guess it, the man dies. Sorry if I didn't explain <laughs> that. So it's kind of a fun game to play because you're hoping that your man will not die. Well, with a crossword puzzle, uh, you don't have that element of a little game, but you have a lot of different words. So um, this can be... A lot, I see a lot of people when they travel, they have crossword puzzles with them. So this can be something that you do um, that you can take with you on a trip or on your commute to work if you're in traffic, not if you're driving, of course, but if you're um, the passenger. There's so many places where you can take a crossword puzzle and you can practice your English while doing it. So it's kind of amazing uh, because you don't need to speak with anyone. You can just write it by yourself. Uh, or you can do it on your computer. So it helps with your spelling and your vocabulary. Now let me show you what I mean. Uh, we're going to play, obviously, we're going to do one together. So if you guys, I'm going to look to see if you guys are answering. So please um, pay attention. Okay, so I have some suggestions. Uh, my first one is this one right here. Just one second. Da -da -da. Da -da. Da -da -da. Got it. Okay, so this one is called Free Training Tutorial. Um, and it's kind of an interactive platform where you click on it and then you see this. So first of all, it tells you something uh, that is four letters and not the definition is not costing any money. So what four letter word do we know that means not costing any money? Let's see if you guys can guess it. Not costing any money. Let's see, let's see, let's see who can guess it. Any takers, okay. What? Nobody, I'm going to guess free. Let's see if that's okay. Yeah, good job, Nordin. Good job. Okay, good, good. So let's try another one right here. Uh, down seven letters. You wear them above your nose to see better. What do we think we have? Also, if you get stuck, there's a reveal word option, but let's not click on that to make sure that we can guess it. So it tells you down or across. What do we wear above your nose to see better? I'm wearing them right now. In fact, if I don't wear them, I am blind as a bat. That's a English idiom. I 
clothes. So what do we wear? What are these called? Glasses. That's right. Okay, good job. Glasses. Glasses. And of course, in this in this um, game, spelling really, 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 really counts because um, because if you misspell one word, it's going to mess up another word. So we're going to try one more. This one right here to see a yellow sour fruit. A yellow sour fruit, five letters. Glasses, good job. Thank you, guys. Face mask, maybe. <laughs> but no, it's glasses, glasses. So uh, what's a, a, a yellow sour fruit? Let's see. Who can answer it? <laughs> it is funny idiom, Ricardo, yeah. Okay, so Yasmin says lemon. Let's try lemon. Lemon. That is correct. But you guys see how spelling really matters for this game? Because if I had written grasses, for example, then I would be confused and it would be hard for me to guess lemon. So it's very, very important uh, to make sure that your spelling is really good on these. Uh, the other thing I was going to show you was if you, for example, don't have access to the internet, uh, I found this cool website called eslgamesplus.com where you can print, you can print some of these um, crossword puzzles and they're also on categories and they can be from objects or like uh, rooms in the house, like bathroom or bedroom or body parts and colors to things like adjectives or actions. So you can really um, use some of these um, to really practice a specific part of English that you have issues with. So if you print them out, you can take them, like I said, on a trip, you can take them on the bus and you can just fill them out um, without the destruction of the internet, which is sometimes very, very, very nice. So um, I think I had, yeah. So they're very, oops, not hangman, crosswords, okay. So um, those are very, very useful. Like I said, it's a little bit more difficult and sometimes you can do uh, some really difficult ones. And if you're in need of a challenge, I actually have to show you another one. And this one is from dictionary.com. Uh, it ha They have a free daily crossword and it's pretty difficult. So we're not going to play it right now because of time, but they do have one and uh, it's pretty lengthy. So it's, it's, it's really good because you have the option of going from easy to challenging. So I definitely recommend doing these at any level. Okay. I'll, like I said, I'll put the links before uh, in the description once we are finished. Okay, are you guys ready for the next one? I am so excited because this is something that I used to uh, play a lot when I was younger and now we've repurposed it. We gave it an English an English uh, application. Thank you guys for answering. I still see uh, lemon and glasses. Yes, you guys are correct. Those were the correct answers. Lemon and glasses. Thank you for answering. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about is this little game that many kids play when they're busy. They look at two pictures side by side and they have to spot the difference. So they have to find the differences in these pictures. Now, before I we play this game together, I want to give you some instructions on how you can play this so it can benefit your English. Because this can be a very beneficial game or activity, okay? Very, very beneficial. Um, what I would like you to ask, to ask you to do is, every time you, you, you do this activity, is to ask yourself, how are these two different images different? So I want you to describe the differences. Make sure you write them in full sentences because of course some of them might be easy to spot but the point is not to find them as much as to talk about them. That is where the English practice comes in hand. So you can use adjectives, uh, actions. Uh, I just want to make sure that you're being as descriptive as possible. This is where it becomes very, very useful. Let me show you what I mean with a picture that I have right here. Are you ready? 
Are you ready to help me spot the differences? Yes, please, please join. Thank you so much. Join everyone into our spot the difference activity. Okay, it is about to start. Good, good, good. Okay, so I have here, there are 10 differences in this, on this website, there's 10, 10 differences. It's an easy uh, picture, they're not that hard, but I want you to write down what are the differences that you notice, okay? But make sure to be descriptive. I will give you an example, and then while I talk, please write down any differences that you notice. So, for example, in the second picture, there is a black baby chicken, black little chick. Uh, while in the first picture, there is, the little chicken, the little baby chicken is yellow. See? So you have to make sure to describe these differences. Of course, it's easy to spot them, but what I'm interested in is describing them. So let's see if you guys noted anything else. The cow. Okay, what about the cow? Make sure to be descriptive. Um, a blue rooster moon in the sky so yeah very good but please make sure write down write down uh, a complete sentence blue chicken yes but make sure so yeah this is like a blue rooster um, and so the best way to do this would would be in the second picture there is a blue rooster and in the first picture there is no rooster so if you're using complete sentences you are fully um, trying to develop your English skills okay so let's see uh, any other any other differences that you've noticed a bee uh, the cow has black stains very good exactly so in the second picture the cow has black stains or spots and in the first picture, the cow has brown spots. Perfect. So this is how I want you to play this activity. Just explain um, the differences. Don't just say what they are. An insect. Oh, perfect. In the second picture, the dog's tail has a little bee. And the first picture, the dog doesn't have a little bee. Perfect. So exactly. So the... <laughs> that's exactly right so this is something you can do with yourself uh, and I'll show you how to get find some of these together but definitely definitely um, write in complete sentences okay so are you let's see any more differences um, you can see the Sun in the second picture very good exactly you can see the Sun perfect wonderful job everyone that's exactly how I want to do this uh, let's see if you wrote any other differences. Um, somebody thought, yeah, it was a hen. Yeah, they kind of look like a hen. I, I, They made it blue because I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe to show that he is the rooster. Who knows? Um, any other differences that you see? Anything else? Um, there is a red butterfly in the first picture. That is correct. That is the red. There is a red butterfly in the first and no red butterfly in the second perfect so you get how this game is uh slash activity is played how we are doing this make sure to describe these as much as you can now if you're wondering how can i find um these activities a very very great way to do it an easy way is to do a google search this is what i did i wrote spot the difference up here and you can see so many um, differences, so many pictures that come up. And uh, something that I think Wes even uh, did a lesson on is the usefulness of Google Images. It's such a useful tool for you. So if you have grammar questions or things like that, you can always type them in, in Google Images. But I love it for this activity. Spot the difference. So you can use any of these. You can do it while on your computer or you can print them out if you want to use your color printer <laughs> you can print them out and you can definitely um, definitely do this activity by yourself okay okay are you guys ready for the next one let's see okay uh, the next one, oh gosh, I'm biased because I love all of these activities, but the next one is among my favorites, probably my favorite. 
because it involves emojis uh there are so many reasons why i love emojis uh there's I think they bring such a wonderful dimension to language. You can express a lot more. Um, they're fun. <laughs> they're funny. Uh, you can just play with them as much as you want. But in terms of learning English, they can also be very useful. Who knew? And I'll show you how. So uh, I like them because they develop your creative thinking. They help you um, maybe if you're kind of stuck learning English, you're just learning grammar, grammar, grammar all the time. Sometimes you need a little bit of inspiration to make things fun. This is a great way to do it. Uh, they also help you develop your vocabulary and fluency if you do it this way. So now I want you guys to put your creative hats on, okay, and become very, very creative because I'm about to show you something fun that I do with my students. Thank you guys for answering, by the way, about the ladybug and all these other differences. Thank you for being so descriptive. This is great. This is wonderful. This is exactly what we need to do. You need to speak, use as many words, be as descriptive as possible because that makes your English great. Okay. So are you ready? This is something I do with all my students and I love it. It's one of my favorite activities. Okay, here we go. So in, in the comments, uh, I want you guys to, in the comments, I want you to do the following. I want you to um, write a sentence, one sentence or maybe two sentences, but a very, very short story involving these three emojis, okay? So we have a poodle, we have a plane, and we have a key. So write down any sentence you can think of involving these three pictures and you can be as creative as possible. So I'll give you some time while I'll tell you my short little story and see what you guys come up with, okay? And again, I'll put the links to these websites. I'll put them all in the description. Okay, so I'll tell you my story and then you can write yours also. Uh, yesterday I was driving to the airport, therefore I'm using the plane, I was driving to the airport and in the car next to me I saw a poodle, a poodle and he accidentally ate a key. Okay, so again, these stories can be funny. I want them to be short because the point is to give you ideas to use your English. Let's see what you guys came up with. I don't see anything yet, but maybe my, uh, maybe my live feed is not catching up. But I will give you another one, okay, in a second, and then I'll read your responses out loud as soon as I see them. Are you ready for the next one? Okay. So they spin, 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 spin. And then you have a snail, a shower, and a clock. Now, as you can see, as you can see, these emojis do help you because you have to think of the word in English and then you have to put it in a complete sentence. So yes, you're being creative. Yes, you are um, using your vocabulary. And yes, you're practicing your sentence structure. And these are very important skills to have when we are talking about being fluent in English. So if you are seeing this, please write a sentence in the comments about these three pictures, okay? One sentence, a very short story of one or two sentences. Snail shower clock or alarm clock, snail shower <laughs> And in the meantime, I'll read what you guys wrote about the, the poodle. The poodle was the pilot of a plane, but she couldn't start the plane because she forgot the key. Um, <laughs> this is Wes's sentence. Um, it's, it's a pretty good one. I love it. A small dog wants to swallow the key of the captain so he can't go in the airplane. Perfect. Thank you, guys. See, so... This is so great. And you can make them simple, too, because then you'll say, you don't understand much English you can make it very simple too. The snail took a shower at eight o'clock. <laughs> you can make it very, or whatever, it's 10 o'clock. Um, so you can make it very easy too. You don't have to make it complicated, but if you want, you can. 
As Nella just woke up because the alarm clock was set at 11 p.m., that reminded she got to take the shower. Exactly. So you can make this as crazy as you want or as short as you want. But I suggest making it a little crazy because it's fun. You ready to do another one? Okay, we have another snail. We have a bomb. And that could be... According to most of my students, it's a castle, but it could also be the Taj Mahal, maybe. I don't know. But you can kind of, you don't have to be exact. Instead of bomb, you can say explosion. Instead of uh, the building, you can say a temple or you can say a castle. So let's see. Um, I, I keep reading. Um, I was taking a shower when suddenly a snail, but it was a gigantic one. I was terrified and out of the blue, my clock rang. I woke up. It was a bad dream. Perfect. You guys are doing so well. A white snail took shower alarm, went off. <laughs> was snail. Yeah, exactly. Um, I had taken a shower before the clock got 7 a.m., found the snail by the door. Wonderful. I have to take a shower because it's very hot here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Junior. <laughs> okay, so let's see any sentences about the snail, the bomb or explosion and the castle or temple or whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, I'm going to say my sentence. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, the snail caused an explosion at the castle. Boom. Uh, maybe this was an explosive snail. I don't know. But he caused an explosion at the castle. So... <laughs> okay, so I just read Wes's sentence. The snail wanted to visit the Taj Mahal because it's the bomb. It's amazing. When the snail was about to get into the building, the bomb blasted. Sure. Hi, Mana. Welcome. So if you guys are just joining and wondering what are we doing, what is going on, uh, we are doing activities you can do by yourself. This particular one stimulates your creativity while reminding you of all these vocabulary words um, and also making sure that you, um, you really pay attention to your sentence structure. It's a very, very good one. Okay. So we can, there's a lot to do with this, but I'm going to switch uh, to another one that's equally fun, but a little bit different. So this one is from birdsea.com and the difference with this one, so it will, it will give you different emojis, but what it also does is they don't end. So you can, do, blah, blah. so you have to keep adding to the story. Okay, so are you guys ready? Okay, let me see what else you've written. The castle exploded. I saw a snail running away. The secret agent snail with Bama Temple. You guys are amazing. Your imaginations are incredible. Um, wonderful. Thank you for answering everyone. This is amazing. Okay, so this one is slightly different. So it all starts with a bicycle in this case, but it gives you different ones every time. So we can start it with one sentence. Um, yesterday, I took a bike ride uh, in, the, in the park. And then I saw a tram crossing, <laughs> crossing. And then, and then I saw a little boy next to the tram crying. And I asked him, why are you crying, little boy? And then he told me that he was crying because there was a train coming right at him. And I asked him, why don't you get out of the way? And then he got so happy because of my advice and he told me that he loved me. Do you guys see what I'm doing? <laughs> so I keep adding uh, to, to all of these, to all of these uh, stories. I'm gonna keep going. Uh, but we're going to do one together and I want to see what you guys are doing. So, and then what happened? What do you think happened? So if you listen to my story, I said, uh, yesterday I went on a bike ride in a park and I saw a tram crossing and next to the tram, there was a little boy crying uh, because he was in front of a train and I told, asked him, why doesn't he move away? And he did and he told me he loved me. So let's see if you guys can come up, can continue my story. So this is an angry emoji. What else can we, can you give me with this little, 
with with this uh, angry. While you guys are writing, I'll I'll keep I'll keep going with it. Um, let's see. Um, and then I saw his mother, the boy's mother, looking very angry at me, and I realized that she loved wearing a turban. I don't know why, but she was even angrier. This, I don't know where the story is going, but she got even angrier at me because I was looking at her turban. And then I decided that this was a dream. <laughs> I was asleep. Okay, so you can start over. It's this big and I usually zoom in so I can see it better. Uh, but every time I click on it, it gives me a different emoji and I can start a different story. So... Uh, sure, it belongs to the mother, and then he said he was joking, and so there's so much you can go with it, as you can see. This is so much fun because you can really clip, keep clicking, and then, and then, and then, and it can go on forever. Okay, so... As you can see, they're a lot of fun. There's so much you can do. Uh, and it's kind of wonderful that this resource is right there with emojis. Who knew that emojis could be so useful? So emoji stories, like I said, they're a lot of fun. Uh, they uh, involve your creativity and uh, your vocabulary. Now, if you're doing this on your phone, a way, uh, something I really like to do is to look at apps. I'm constantly on my phone. I'm sure you are too. So I found some emoji apps um, that you can use. I have an iPhone, but my husband, he has an Android. So I was looking on both phones to kind of find uh, some of these apps that I found on here. So um, I know that I think the first one gets the emoji that I've listed. I think it's on both. But you can really just type in guess and emoji in your Google Play Store or in your iTunes or Apple, gosh, what is it called now? Apple Store. I think it's an Apple Store. Yeah. Um, so you can you can type it in and you get these games. Um, there, there are word games. They're actually very educational because uh, some of them are very useful because they'll tell you... Um, compound words so like in this case we have a corn dog um so a corn dog if you don't know it's kind of like a hot dog <laughs> uh but it's it's a it's like a hot dog wrapped in uh, like a corn batter and you eat it on a stick and you eat it with mustard it's a, an american um fair food that you eat at a at a fair and it's um very i don't know if it's as popular anymore it was popular when i was younger so that's a corn dog, but they give you these clever ways of guessing the words. So it's worth checking these apps out. Emoji, um, different emoji apps. You can type in guess the emoji, what emoji, emoji quiz. They're kind of similar, but they all have like, they're all a little bit different. So they are not all like word puns. Some of them are, they show you an emoji and you have to write what it is. Some of them you have to guess a movie. So if you're also interested in American popular culture, this is very useful. Um, like I remember seeing one with a bat and then a man and you have the answer was Batman. So they're actually a lot of fun because you learn a little bit about the culture as well and not just the words. Um, you also get, it's, it's a game, so you also get points and you get coins or whatever. Uh, don't pay for them. I, if you want to pay, it's fine, but, but uh, I don't recommend paying because you can do them for free and they're fun. Okay? So, uh, before we go today, I just want to um, quickly go over the different activities that we talked about today. Um, we have talked about hangman and I gave you uh, different options. We can go anywhere from easy to a little bit more difficult. Uh, we talked about doing crossword puzzles and this is fun because you can do it on the computer. Um, again, you can go from anywhere from uh, easy to dictionary.com, uh, which is pretty difficult. Uh, but you can also print them out. And some websites, like the ones we were talking about, have categories if you're trying to uh, perfect a certain skill. So if you're working on your verbs, it might be uh, very useful for you to print out a whole crossword puzzle on 
actions. So you can practice those in a uh, in fun and interactive way and make sure that you got that spelling right because that is important when we're dealing with English. Another fun way to develop our vocabulary to keep using the descriptive words was to spot the differences. And this one is super easy because all you have to do is go to Google, um, go to Google Images and type in spot the differences and it's right there. You can just print one or work uh, on it while on your computer and describe, make sure to describe those differences very well. And you guys did so amazing and I'm so impressed with our students for how well you did. So wonderful job. And um, my favorite one, the emoji stories, we were looking at different uh, random emojis and we put them in a sentence. We created funny sentences, funny stories, and we got very creative um, with the different kinds of emojis. And of course, we looked at the apps as well. Um, I hope, I hope that uh, this was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. And every time, um, every, every time we do these lessons, we hope that uh, they're very useful to you. I, we hope that you keep improving and we hope that you keep practicing. So I hope that this gave you another way to do that. If you found this lesson um, useful, please like it, please share it with your friends. Um, if you think anyone will find it useful, please show it to them and never stop writing comments. We read them during the lesson. If I miss them, I will see them after the lesson. So please keep writing the comments. We always answer. And um, for more practice, please uh, join our social media classes because we teach there too. So thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Uh, keep practicing your English and keep doing a wonderful, wonderful uh, job like you are doing. Thank you so much and we will see you next time. Bye.